Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners. Welcome to Manifested Online Lessons. My name is Moniki. I'm teaching you chemistry. Our topic of discussion is gas laws. In our previous lessons, we have been discussing all about Boyle's law. And in this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to another law, which is Charles' law. Charles' law was named after a scientist called Jacques Charles. So Jacques Charles is the name of the person who came up with Charles' law. And therefore, the law was named after this person. I want us to start by defining Charles' law. Therefore, definition. Charles' law states that the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute absolute temperature at constant pressure at constant pressure that is how you state Charles law so if somebody asks you state Charles law you just say that it states that the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. So if you leave absolute, then your statement is not right. So it should be absolute temperature at constant pressure. This law basically means that when, when volume increases, Sorry, when temperature see that when temperature <coughs> increases, volume increases. Therefore, if you're having a certain amount of or a certain volume of air at a certain temperature, when you change that temperature or you raise the temperature of that volume of gas, then the volume of this gas will also rise because the temperature increases the kinetic energy of the particles and therefore they expand. That's why when the temperature increases, volume also increases. And I've talked about the absolute temperature. All the calculations involving Charles' law, temperature will always be converted from degrees Celsius to Kelvin. And how you convert degrees Celsius to Kelvin? You just need to add 273. So conversion of degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Therefore, if you have been told the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, therefore, the temperature in Kelvin will be 
25 degrees you multiply, not multiply by two and 273 you get 298 298 kelvin so anytime you are doing calculations involving Charles law then always ensure that you convert the temperature from degree Celsius to Kelvin, that is from the statement. So it should always be converted. So that is how we define Charles law. So ensure that you don't forget that and don't leave the main words. So directly proportional and absolute temperature. Right now I want us to do an experiment to demonstrate Charles law. <clears throat> Experiment to demonstrate Charles law. We'll give you a procedure. Therefore, this is the experiment. This is a procedure of how to go about the experiment. So procedure first, you're supposed to fit a narrow tube into a rubber bung. Fit a narrow glass tube into a rubber bung. Should be a glass tube into a rubber bung. Second, so before second then, this is this is a glass tube, then you fit it in a rubber bung. This one which is marked, that is the rubber bung. Then second, loosely fix the bung into a round-bottomed flask. This is a round-bottomed flask. You can see the bottom is round. So you, you fix it there on a round-bottomed flask. Third, introduce a drop of colored water into the glass tube. So introduce colored water. You can color this water using ink. So this is the drop at the center of the glass tube. When the drop is halfway down the glass tube, of course now when you put the colored drop, colored water into the glass tube, then it will start now moving downwards. So when the drop is halfway down the glass tube, then firmly, firmly the stopper, the flask. Firmly stopper the flask, making it airtight. So you stopper the flask, this is the flask. So you stopper it and make it very firm so that it is airtight. Airtight means there is no air which gets in, there is no air which gets out of this flask. Then note the position of the colored water column in the tube. So note where the position of that colored water drop is in the glass tube. Next, you immerse the flask in a trough of warm water, then observe and record what happens. When you immerse it in a trough of warm water, this is our warm water. So we immerse it in, in a trough of warm water. This is the warm water is labeled. And next, you need to observe what happens once you immerse this in warm water, or this round bottom flask in warm water. The next step, you need to repeat the whole procedure using ice cold in the trough. This time round, 
not warm water, but ice cold water in a trough. Then when you put it in this ice cold water, then you then you also observe what happens at the end of the experiment. These two diagrams are results at the end of the experiment, or what you expect at the end of that experiment. The first one, we now discuss what happens when the round bottom flask has been immersed in warm water. So you can see from the diagram that the original position of the colored water was at this position. Now if you look at the end of the experiment, it is now at this position. So you realize that it has moved a little bit far or up the glass tube. The reason for this is because the water is warm. So when the water is warm, the temperature is higher or the temperature is high. That temperature causes the kinetic energy of the particles to rise. And the particles we are talking about is the air particles which are inside this round-bottomed flask. That these air particles will gain heat energy from this warm water. This heat energy will be converted to kinetic energy and this kinetic energy will make the particles or will make this air to rise or this air will expand. When the air expands then it, it occupies a greater volume and that's why the colored water drop has been pushed upwards because the kinetic energy the particles, the air particles have gained the kinetic energy. This kinetic energy makes the air to expand. When the air expands, it occupies a greater volume. And therefore, that volume, the, the colored water drop has been moved upwards to create more volume. So it moves upwards. In the second, where the flask is immersed in cold water. This cold water is now making the kinetic energy, kinetic energy of the air particles inside the flask to go down or to reduce. When this kinetic energy reduces, then the volume also reduces. When the volume reduces, then that is why the colored water drop is now coming further downwards. Remember it was at this position at the beginning of the experiment. Now you can see it is towards the lower side of the glass tube at the end of the experiment, showing that temperature was low because water is ice cold. Kinetic energy of the air particles has gone down therefore this air contracts or the volume decreases then that's why the ink or the colored water has now moved downwards generally the simple understanding you need to get in this experiment is that when the temperature when the temperature increases the volume also increases. When the temperature increases, the volume also increases. When the temperature decreases, the volume also decreases. And that is now what we have said also from the definition that volume of a fixed mass of a gas is directly, directly proportional to its absolute temperature at constant pressure. Therefore, this experiment has been done at constant pressure. So what is varying is temperature and volume. I hope you get that 
so clearly. That is the simple experiment we can use to demonstrate Charles' law. And I think you've understood that very well. Therefore, that is the end of our lesson. But just before we end, we just want to want us to go through what we have learned in this lesson to see whether you've gained something a little. We started by definition. Uh, you have seen that Charles Law states that the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature at constant pressure. Remember again, I've told you that any time you are doing calculation because we'll be coming to do some calculations on Charles Law, remember that this temperature is always converted to Kelvin. And you convert degree Celsius to Kelvin by adding 270, 273. Like I gave you the example that if you have 25 degrees Celsius, that to convert this 25 degrees Celsius to Kelvin, then it's 25 plus 273, then you get 298 Kelvin. Then you've done this experiment. This experiment where you are having around bottom of the flask, you're having a rubber bang and you're having a glass tube. Just have, and also you're having the colored water in a glass tube. Then once you have this kind of a tube, so you have the colored water, you have the round bottom flask, you have the, the air inside the tube. Then you now put, you have these two flasks, then you put them in different, different temperatures of water. One you are putting it in warm water, and the other one you are putting it in ice cold water. Therefore in this one, Expect the colored water to rise because you have said that the reason why it's rising is because the kinetic energy of the air molecules or the air particles inside increases. When it increases, then it uh, occupies more volume. And that's why the colored water drop is now pushed upwards because the volume is created because of the high temperature. The second, the ice cold water then ice cold water has low temperatures. So it just means again, the particles, the air particles inside decreases. Sorry, the air particles inside, the kinetic energy of those particles reduces. When it reduces, the air occupies less volume. And therefore, that's why the drop is, the colored water is now dropping. You can see the original position. If you compare the original position and the position at the end, then it has gone down. That is a simple experiment you can use to demonstrate Charles' law. I hope you've understood that. Lastly, I will give you an assignment. And the assignment is state Charles' law. The assignment is state Charles law. I hope you'll be, you'll be able to, to do that having learned about or having defined this law. Next time we'll discuss applications of Charles law and maybe a demonstration of a graphical representation of Charles law. Thank you for participating in the lesson. God bless you. Next time. Thank you.